This is Umstark, and in this video we're looking at dynamics with friction. So dynamics is the study of forces in motion, and this time we'll be looking at when we're involving things like friction or smooth pulleys or connected particles. But that is essentially the idea of dynamics. So the first question here says that a buoy sits on a sledge on rough horizontal ground. The combined mass is 80 kilograms. And then a friend pulls the rope attached to the sledge with a force of 500 newtons at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. So we'll draw that first of all before we start looking at friction. Uh, so therefore we have this horizontal ground and we have a combined, we're going to use it as a system. So we're just going to say that they're one object, the, the buoy and the sledge um, of 80 kg. Then here we have a friend pulling the rope attached at an angle of 25 degrees. So we've got an angle there of 25 degrees and we'll have to resolve this in a second. Um, and then also if we look down then we're going to have 80g going down. We're also going to have R coming up. If we then look at friction if you remember from the last video, we know that friction is equal to the coefficient of friction R. Therefore, if the coefficient, uh, the coefficient of friction is equal to two thirds, then what we're going to have is two thirds R. So now we need to resolve this over here. So we have 25 degrees here. If we're going opposite, then what we're going to get is this is a tension here of 500, that's what he's pulling it with. So opposite, that means it's going to be sine. So we're going to have 500 sine 25. And then we're also here going to have 500 cos 25. So that means that first of all, what we need to do is work out what R is, and then we can use R to work out what friction is, and then we can find out the acceleration using F equals MA. So to find out what R is, we're going to find it result vertically. So R plus 500 sine 25 is equal to 80G, and now 80G is just 80 times by 9.8. Therefore, using that, we're going to get that R is equal to 572.7 newtons. So therefore, now we have what R is, we can now do um, horizontally. And to do horizontally, we're going to have a 500 cos 25, which we'll say is our positive direction. That's going to be minus then two thirds five seven two point seven. Five seven two point seven. Now that is going to be equal to MA, that's our force, so that's going to be equal to MA, so that's going to be equal to AT times by acceleration. So therefore, what we have is seventy one point four is equal to 80A, so therefore A is equal to 0 0.89 meters per second squared. So the next question says that three forces of magnitude 55 newtons, 40 newtons and 35 newtons act on a particle of mass 12 kg in the direction shown in the diagram. So you have to find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the particle. And first of all, let's split this up and resolve because we have three different forces acting upon it. The first one, if we see, is going to be 40 newtons acting up here. And then we can resolve it into this and this. Now this angle here is going to be 10 degrees. Um, now we know that because that there is a straight line and that's going to be 90 degrees. So 
doing that, that there would be 0, so 100, so we've got 100 minus 10 well, to get that 10 there. That's going to be 10. That's how we know that that bit there is 10 degrees. So therefore, now we know that that's 10 degrees. We can resolve this. So this is going to be opposite here. So horizontally, we've got 40 sine 10. And then as it's adjacent, we're going to get 40 cos 10. And now we've got that. Then we can do this one here. As this one is going down there, that's 35 newtons. And then we've got across here and up here. Now the angle here, that is going to be 25 degrees. And again, we know this, we've got, so we've got 90 degrees here. We have then 180 here. So we've got 180. That's going to be 115 there. That means that that's going to be 25 there. So that means that now we know that that's 25. We're going to get 35 here, which is the, the force there. Then that will be cos, because it's adjacent, 25. And then we have here 35 sine 25. Then the final one, which is the easy one to work out, that's just straight across 55. So therefore, if we look at horizontally first, what we're going to have is we're going to have 55 newtons here. And then that is going to be minus. And then we've got two forces acting in the opposite direction. So we have 40 sine 10. And that's going to be plus 35 sine 25. And that is going to be equal to 33.26 newtons. Then for the other one, vertical, so we've got two um, forces acting there, but this doesn't have a vertical component. So you've got up and down. Up, what we have is this one here, 40 cos 10. So 40. And downwards, we've got this one going down here, minus 35 cos 25. And that is equal to 7.67 newtons. So then we have to work out the acceleration. So to work out the acceleration, what we have here is 33.26 and then 7.67. And it's a mass of 12 kg. So that's going to be equal to 12A. Therefore, A is going to equal um. A is going to equal 2.77 and then 0.64. But that isn't our final answer. We have what A is now. Now we need to find its magnitude and its direction. So its magnitude is going to be got by Pythagoras' theorem. So you've got 2.77 squared plus 0.64 squared. And that is going to be equal, therefore, to 2.84 meters per second squared. And then its direction, or well, this direction, is going to be got by doing tan inverse tan. Now we're getting this from doing the 2.77 across and then 0.64 up. Uh, and then we're finding that angle there. It's going to be opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be inverse tan, but 0 0.64 over 2.77, which is equal 
to 13 degrees. And that is going to be above this 55 Newton force. So the final question we've got is looking at it resting on a rough slope which is inclined. It says that we have a block of mass 125 kg. Is it rest on a rough slope inclined at 40 degrees? So therefore, what we're going to have is a slope here. And this is inclined at 40 degrees. There, that's 40. Then what we have is a mass of 125. That's kg. So there we've got our reaction force up here, R. And then it says that a coefficient of friction between the block and the slope is a fifth. So that means down here we have a fifth R. And it says a cable is attached to the block and it's pulled with a force of 1,800 newtons. So this means that we have 1,800 newtons up here. Now we also have to be able to find out the weight going down. So this we're going to have to do a little bit more because it's sloped as weight acts vertically downwards. So we have 125 G there. So therefore we're going to have resolve it into two parts that there is going to be 40 now it's 40 because that's the same as that angle there the two angles there are the same so therefore this is going to be 125 g cos 40 and then this is going to be 125 g sine 40 So therefore what we'll start off by doing is working out what R is. Um, as R, we're working out perpendicular to this, so R is simply equal to 125 G cos 40, which is that one going down. We're looking at that there. So put that in your calculators and we'll use G as 9.8. That means that R is equal to 938 Um, 0.404. So now we know what R is, uh, now we can do uh, work out horizontally. And for horizontally, what we're going to have is we're going to have the um, 125G sine 40. That will be plus the fifth R. So we have Um, that's plus a fifth R, and that is going to be equal to 1,800 newtons. So therefore, we can take 1,800 minus all of this. Now we know here we've got R as um, 938 as we've just seen there. So sub that all into our calculators, and we're going to get that 1,800 minus 975.096. That's equal to 824.904. Therefore, that is our force going up there. So that's going to be 824.9 is equal to 125A because we're doing F is equal to MA. So therefore A is going to be equal to 6.6 .6 meters per second squared. So now it asks us to find, it should, we've shown that A is equal to 6.6, .6. that's the first part of the question. Now it asks us to how long it finds to take travel 10 meters, which we'll be using a Suvat equation um, with A in it, which we've just found out. So that's why we needed to find out A. So that means that what we're going to have is S is the thing that we're trying to find. 
then u is going to be 0, that's because it, it, it is as rest as it says in the first line of a question. Uh, then v, we don't know that, and neither do we need it. a is going to be 6.6. .6. t is actually going to be our unknown, and s just really is asking us 10 meters, so that's why that's actually going to be 10. So therefore, the one we're going to be used is s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. So therefore, s 10 is going to be equal to, that's 0, which would mean that half a t squared is going to be 3.3 t squared. Therefore, t squared is equal to 3.03 t is going to be therefore equal to 1.74 seconds. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.